Welcome, everybody, to today's webinar on advanced analytics. Um, as Alex mentioned, my name is James Brown. I am the Sugar Market Services Manager, and my role is to really ensure that Sugar is providing our customers with the best sugar market services and consultancy possible. And as I mentioned before, I realized just before the webinar that actually today is 13 years since I first started using Sugar Market today. So it's kind of my birthday in a way of using the system. But there we go. So 13 years of using Sugar Market or Sales Fusion as it was beforehand. But hopefully you can all see my screen on him. And what we're going to do is go through some basics with advanced analytics. I know some of you may be new to seeing this, to seeing advanced analytics on here. Some of you may be high level users as well. Some of you may have access, but have never logged in. So what I'm going to do today is give a different level uh, of presentation on here. So it's for everybody. So how does advanced analytics work? So advanced analytics is a third party platform that is plugged into Sugar Market. It allows you to create reports and dashboards based on data or information or emails, for example, that you are sending out from Sugar Market. Sugar Market is really good at giving you reports on one individual asset, such as an email or a form or your website. But if you want to get a holistic view, a broader view of all of your emails or a given time period, this is where advanced analytics comes in because you can build dashboards and reports in here and have them scheduled to send out to you daily or weekly or however you want and to any user. One of the first things I want to show you in here is recently we had an upgrade. We upgraded to the latest version of advanced analytics. And all this has done really is mostly aesthetic changes. But on here, at the top, users may have already seen that Explore was in the top bar, but this has now moved to the left-hand side. So Explore is now at the top. And Explore is where you build reports. Also, when building a report, it allows you in here now to choose your time zone for your user to see the report for your time zone. But this only works for new reports you're creating. Any previous reports you've already built, you'll have to manually change the time zones when in those reports. And one thing I say to everybody, every customer, anybody using advanced analytics is don't be scared in here of getting in and having a go. The reason is you can't edit in here. You're not going to edit your data or your CRM on here. You're not going to change any records or send out emails. It is simply a reporting tool. Yes, you can get lost in the data and build some crazy reports in here, but that's all you can do. You're not going to break anything. Well, touch wood, you won't break anything. On here, you're just it's just a reporting tool using the data coming in from Sugar Market. Now, I wanted to mention as well on here, I am in a demo account. So some of the areas you'll see in here, you won't see in your account in advanced analytics. As I've got a bigger view, I can see lots of customers in here and what they're doing. Also, some of the data and reports I have to run is old legacy data. So whereas I use older timeframes or longer timeframes, I would recommend that you should use shorter, such as one week, one month, three, six, nine, 12 months. Whereas I may use 36 months because I need to go back a lot further to pull in the dummy data. But yep, yeah, as Alex has mentioned, feel free to ask questions as we go through. Whether this, other, otherwise, this could be a very short session. All right, so I'm not going to go through all the features in him. As if you've had Sugar Market training before with one of our services consultants, we will go in depth and go through all the features that you have inside Advanced Analytics. What I want to do is go in and just look at how to create some reports, some useful reports that you can use day to day. How to create dashboards in here, how to schedule those dashboards to send out. So when creating a report inside Advanced Analytics, we start with Explore. Now, these are all the options you have to start off with creating your report. So are you looking at email campaign performance, the history of your leads and contacts, basic CRM data? Again, this isn't really a, a CRM reporting tool. 
We only have basic fields in here. If you're running reports on CRM data, then do that via your CRM or via market where you have all your custom fields available to you. There are no custom fields inside advanced analytics. You can look at your list performance, events that you've been running, old forms and pages, your opportunities, new forms and pages, or web activity. Now let's just start with some basics. So let's say, okay, we, we want to think, what is our best, um, best performing email campaign for a given time period over the past 12 months? Okay, six months, we want to see which email has been our best performing. So I'm going into campaign performance. And this is the report builder. At the top here, these are our filters. The visualization, so how can we build a bar chart or pie chart, whatever chart we want to build in here. And the data down here is just the data, the raw data we're looking at to pull together the visualization. On the left-hand side, we have all of our fields. So is it account owner, accounts, campaign recipient? So these are all the options we have. So if I click on campaign recipients, you'll see all the information, all the fields we can choose from. So if we're building a campaign report, I'm gonna click on campaigns. I wanna see the name. So if I click on name under campaigns, it's here in the middle. If I want to add this as a filter, you can see on here, pivot table, or I can also filter by this field. You can also do this by the cog icon on the column. So top performing on here, I want to see percentage of opens and percentage of clicks on each email. So down here, we can see unique open percentage, Add that one in and click percentage. So I've now got three columns. And the way to think about these reports is you always start off very, very basic. You're probably gonna add all these in, just have one filter and then click run. And it'll give you a broad, result, broad um, spectrum of results in here. I then recommend adding additional filters to get more granular, more focused, more targeted on the data you're trying to see. So on here now, if I just click run, I haven't added any filters, and you'll see I've not even adjusted this here, it's probably gonna show me zero. And we have to give it a second to load. Oh, we have one with no statistics. But what I'm going to do now is we're going to add filters in. We're going to adjust this because we've just really put in a data dump. Now, here's a tip for you. Is in the past one years only goes back to the start of the calendar year. If you want to go back one year, I always say in here, you put 12 months and that makes it a roll in 12 months. I recommend for a campaign report like this, depending on how many emails you are sending, it would be 12, six, three months on here and it would just be a rolling report. So new, new emails would be added, old emails would be removed. Now, as I mentioned, I'm using dummy data. So I'm going to throw into here 36 months. And let's see what happens. We go. So I've got lots of emails down here. And I'm probably thinking, well, actually, some of these I know were test emails or are small emails that are really not relevant to this campaign performance. We're looking at our larger emails. So what I can do, you see send count here? I can now filter to stop this field. And I'm going to say, well, actually, I want the emails to be sent to more than 100 people. So anything less than 100, eh, it's too small of an email to be to appear in my report. Now 
There we go. They're now down to four. So you're thinking, actually, 100 is too, too high. So I can always change this and go down to 50 if I needed to. Go. See if I can pull in any more. I'm going to go down to 20 as a minimum. But you can see how easy it is to just manipulate and change those filters to pull in more data. But really, what I've created here, you could probably create in Sugar Market. It's the next part that you can't do in Sugar Market. So let's minimize the filters and the data. So organized by unique opens, I could do it by clicks, but let's leave it on opens. And let's look at the visualization. Here we go. There's a report in here. And we can just go with a data table if we wanted to, or columns in here, bar charts, scatter plot, which will look terrible here, uh, area charts, maps on here, single values. We can even go with donuts if we wanted to. Let's just keep to a simple column chart for this one. Now, maybe I don't like these colors on here. So I can now edit my visualization. So on here, you can change all the legends, hide legend. And go to the series, I can change the colors. I can even change the values that we're seeing. I can change the X and Y axis as well. So how simple was that just to create a chart of our best performing emails over three, six, 12 months on it? So we can clearly see this one. Yes, it had the best percentage of opens, but click wise, actually it's this one here. So what we have is 37% people opened who we sent to, and of those 37%, 60% of them clicked in the email. So engagement rates, I would say this one was the, probably the best performing. Now this is for all email campaigns, but we can get really granular. We can make multiple reports in here. So I'm gonna minimize visualization and open up my filters and the data. So let's say you've got certain types of email. So we could save that first one as an overall view. So if you wanted to save it, you can go up here, we can save. Top right, I'm gonna save as a look, saves it as a report, or we can add it to a new dashboard, an existing dashboard. But what we can then do is say, okay, this is an overall view, but now I want to see by the types of emails. So maybe it's events or invites that you're sending out. You can see down here resources that we have. So resource downloads that we're sending, white papers, case studies, blogs. So based on the types of emails and your naming conventions for your email campaigns, you can actually build more targeted reports. And yes, correct. This is the same tool uh, as Google's Looker Studio. This is Looker that we are in. The click through rates out of the box, do you mean click rates versus the sent number as opposed to versus the open rate? So one here, most of the majority of the reports you'll see in analytics and even through Sugar Market will show you click rates versus the open rate on that, as opposed to the sent number. In Sugar Market, you can actually see both for your email. So versus open or versus sent number and versus open rate. And what I'm gonna do here is let's go down and under resources on here, I'm thinking, okay, well, I want to show just a report here on all the emails we send out that are resources. 
So I'm actually going to filter off the name. So I'm going to hit filter, name. So remember, you've got to have strong naming conventions on here. If you're just using any random names, it's hard to filter and create great reports. Resource dash. So hopefully, crossing fingers, if I run now, we'll only have resource emails. There we go. So now what I could do is again, maybe I could change the color if I needed to on this one. And then what I will do is up here, I can save it as a different look. So this would be my resources top performing campaigns for the past six months. So yes, we've got the overall one, but now we're getting down to the types of emails. And James, there's also some questions about sharing. Can you go into more detail about sharing those uh, in CSV or Excel formats, PDF, et cetera, sending out to other members of your organization? Yeah, sure. So just for one report on him, you'll see under this option, under the cog icon, you can download this if you wanted to, just yourself to a PDF, CSV. Send this to somebody. Save and schedule this so you can save it and schedule to send out. Share, merge results, remove fields and filters. But if I go to save and schedule. Let's just call this webinar and resource. Paint. So I'm going to save and view the look. There's the report on him. Can you see over on the right hand side, we now have create the schedule. So schedule means I can have this send out every day or whenever I choose. So what do you want to name your schedule? Where should it go to? So you can have any email. They don't have to be able to log in. This can be whoever you want in here. And it can be multiple addresses and you can have a custom message in here. Now, data table means they'll see it as you saw the um, report in the background. Same with the visualization that will come through as a bar chart. Or do you want it in CSV, Excel, an image, text, or HTML? How do you want this to send through? I'm going to say we can send this weekly, Monday, 6 a.m. And with advanced options, maybe you know that this person you're sending it to is not in your time zone. You can choose a different time zone. And it will send 6 a.m. their time. All I would do then is click save. And then that's the schedule set up to send out to those people at the given time. And you can do this for a whole dashboard as well, which I'll be showing you shortly. Hopefully that helps on that. I won't say that, otherwise Bob at abc.com will be receiving that every week. Okay, so on here now, we've created one report. Let me show you another one quickly, which is also great to do for campaign performance. So let's say, okay, well, when's our best time for sending out emails? When are we getting the most opens of our email campaigns? Well, obviously, the best, most, most opens you're going to get are always at the times you're sending. So if you're sending at 10 a.m. every Wednesday, you expect to see a spike on a Wednesday at 10 a.m. But what about those spikes in between? What about the times in between that you can't see? Correct, Kapil. Yeah. It sends to the user that's logged in to see the test. So let's go through and have a look at how to check on the best open times for our email campaigns. What's our best performing time of the week? So because you've got a big email we're sending next week, we want to make sure we're sending out the best time to get the best engagement rates. So under email open activity, we have the open date. 
So I'm going to add into here the day of the week, the hour of the day, and the total open count. Now, first of all, on here, our filters at the top, we want to adjust this. So remember, my date is crazy. If you probably go back 12 months, six months on here, but I'm going to go back, not 36 years, but 36 months. I may go back even further to get some more data, go back 50 on that. And the first filter that I normally add into here is the total open count. So I don't want to see anything that's zero. And you have more than one open at that time period. So it has to be greater than or equal to one. And we run. And let's just wait a minute for to pull the stats together. Here we go. Can you hear? So we can clearly see Thursday, it's a 24 hour clock. So 10 a.m., biggest number of opens. But it's just a long list in here. Also, there's weekends in here, there's hours of the day we're never really going to send. So this is where I say we start to add more filters in to get more granular, to focus on the times that we want to see. The day of the week, I'm gonna say we're never gonna send on a weekend. So I don't want to see, is not Saturday, plus is not Sunday. Don't show me weekends. Also the hour of the day. 24 hour clock on here. So only show me between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. And then run. So we're removing a lot of the noise from around the edges to focus on the results we want to see. And again, it's just a big long list. But what we can do on here is you'll see we have pivot. And this will bring all the data together to make it more useful for creating reports. Now, sometimes when I create reports in here, I throw a pivot in and it doesn't work. But the good news is you can just take it away and try it again if you needed to. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But watch this. I'm going to organize my data. All right, so we've got day of the week across the top, the hour of the day down the left, and all the stats in here. So visualization, we go, it's got a legacy table in here. I don't want to see that. I want to see a line chart. Here it is. I'm going to change the colors. So as we mentioned, we can clearly see 10 a.m. We send out a lot of emails at 10 a.m. on here. So that's when we're getting good engagement rates. We can also see we do, you know, over lunchtime, there isn't to, that much engagement really it's going down on here but we can also see we do get peaks in the afternoon but again you want to look sometimes for the peaks in between when you normally send if you're always sending at 10 a.m you're always going to have a spike here if you're always sending at 2 p.m you'll always have a spike there but maybe you're thinking well what about the spikes in between for example here we've got a tuesday at 1 p.m it goes up again yes you can have all operations in there as well. Um, when you had on here, so if I put a oh, it's or I think when you when you have them separated in here, when you have them together, it's always and on this one. But if you had a separate filter on here, it is or at that point. But you see how easy it was just to create this report. And this could be for six months of emails, could be a certain type of email that you're sending out again. So this could be just for resources, not all of your emails, but how are they engaging with resources? Maybe they have different engagement times compared to your newsletters. And yeah, we clearly see that we don't send many emails on a Friday, but it depends on the content. 
people say, oh, don't send emails on Fridays. Um, but it depends if you're sending out financial results on a Friday, maybe be, maybe a bad idea. But if you're sending out interesting blog articles, something, you know, getting them ready for something exciting that you're doing as a business, people may want to read that on a Friday. And again, you can just do the same thing. Save in, save and schedule as well. Now, another easy way on here, so you can create one report and save. But if you just want to create another report based on the area that you're in, so again, on campaign performance, when you click remove fields and filters, you're just starting fresh. There we go. Close everything out. We can just start again. If you've already saved it, that's fine. The report's already saved. You move on to the next one. Now, I want to have a little, a little look at events next. So if I click on market, it takes me home. Go back into Explore. And here we have events. So I want to see, okay, well, of the events we've run for the past year, how many registered, how many attended? Which ones are our most successful events that we've run? So over here on the left-hand side, we have more options. We now have the events options in here. So again, first of all, I want my event name, him. And you can see registered, whose account, attended account, uh, attended count. Now let me change my filters on here because we need to have um, a start date on this in one second. Expiration date filter on there. Is in the past, let's go back a long time. I would recommend for you guys again, six months, 12 months, good time period. Wow, all them webinars, all one that we had. I want to go back even further, aren't I? Well, we've had three. Three is good enough on here. So we've had three events over that time period. And again, if I minimize on here to visualization, there's the report. So what are our top events that we've run? So again, seven, 770 registered, we have 255 attended. And it's the same thing again to be applied on here. We can change the colors, the series, et cetera. Hey, James, there's a quick question on uh, yeah, analytics. Is it free? Is it included with Sugar Market or is it an additional add on? It's free with Sugar Market. So, all we need um, are your user details, so your email address. If you send that to, to um, support or your CSM, they can set up your advanced analytics account for you. But there you go, that's how easy it is for you to just build an events report to see, okay, what's our best performing event? So webinars, whatever you've been running for the time period you have in your filter, hopefully not 75 months. All right, so that's enough on reports on here. So you're building all your reports, which is great. They're all individual reports in themselves. 
But what we want really is a dashboard to see all different kinds of reports that we have. So down here, what we're seeing is all our saved dashboards in this section. Yours should hopefully be nice and clean. Now you'll see on here, I created these different reports to put into my dashboard. And it's very simple to create a dashboard in here. When you log in, you simply go to new and you'll see dashboard up here. Now, let me click on this one as this is one I've already been cre I've already created for you. Let's go in, have a look. Okay, so if I go to edit on here, you can just see how this works. So when you've named your dashboard in the previous part where we click new, on there, you can add in text areas. So you can add a tile, so add a visualization, add some text into here. And what I did is I added a header, which I can just move around wherever I need to. I need to edit, I can. I then had a subheader I put into here as well. So top performing marketing assets. So first of all, this is my top performing emails. So all my emails on here, unique opens, unique clicks. And the good news is again, when you're editing on here, I can just drag this around if I needed to. Move it wherever I need on the page, smaller, larger. Here's my top events. Again, registered and attended. I then had another text section. So email engagement results. So top email open times on here, as well as all the clicks per month. So when's our best month for getting clicks on our campaigns? Well, whatever we sent in July on here, got the most clicks. So July was a good month for engagements. And then some basic website analytics. So web hits per month on here, as well as a heat map showing you all the web hits and their location. Now up here, you'll see I can go back to dashboard details if I need to, but I'm just gonna cancel as I didn't save anything in here. So you built your dashboard. Yeah. James, when you're uh, building a dashboard with the text formatting, can you uh, add any, uh, sorry, when you're adding the text, can you add any formatting options on those uh, text yeah. boxes? Sure. I don't think you can on here. Yeah, the question was asking, like making the, um, the header larger, subheader medium. So I'm guessing what you're showing here might be part of that answer. I don't think it can be done on here, but I'm going to save and you'll see. So yeah, you can see that it makes it slightly smaller on here, but you can't edit this font styling or size on this. It's kind of stuck in place with the sizes that you see, but obviously your main header and subheader will be smaller and your text in there will be smaller as well. Thanks. So one here, we've created our dashboard. It's looking great, we're happy with it. Your managers want to receive this now every week or every month or even every day. It's up to you. It's up to them on here. So what we'll do now is in the dashboard actions, you can just refresh your dashboard, edit, copy the dashboard if you needed to, download. Here it is. Schedule delivery. So we want to receive this maybe daily. We want to see a report every day on here. I want to receive it at 9 a.m. Again, it can be any email address on here. They don't have to be a user. And what format do they receive it in? CSV, PDF, or a PNG file? Now, again, you do have advanced options, so based on their location. And you can see paper size. If they do want to print it off, for whatever reason afterwards, they can do to make sure it fits the page correctly, especially on a PDF.
Also in here, you've got get link, so you can link directly to this dashboard. There it is. And there are other options in here. You can see that we have each tile's time zone, so making sure which time zone is on here. So each tile's time zone should be set to which time zone on here is the default. Ah, yes. So when you're creating in here, so if I go back to explore, let me go back to any of my reports. Go back here. So let's take, I don't know what this Adidas example is. Um, actually, these are dashboards that we go down to reports down here. So best send time, this one here. If I want to add it to a dashboard, we go in. Here's my report. See so it says save. So when you're saving your report, okay, you can either add it as a new dashboard to a new one, add to an existing one you've already created, or just save it as a report. So what I'm going to do is if I add to an existing dashboard, uh, this is my one here, save to dashboard. So I've saved it in there now. It's gone to that dashboard. So if I go back here, And you can have advanced analytics open in multiple tabs, just so you know, to make things quicker if you wanted to. But if I edit, I think down here, oh, best send time, here we go. So obviously that report I pulled in has no statistics, but here it is now and I could just say, okay, let's move this. This is where I want it to go. Save that wonderful work of art in there. Save that into here. There's my dashboard. And again, when I hover, hover over any report, you can explore from here, which means let's go in and create a report. I'll look at the data from this point, from, from this report that was already built. You can download the data on here, download to a CSV if you need to. Just view the report on here or just refresh this report. But really what I've shown you there in just the past 40 minutes is really an overview of a few reports you can build inside Advanced Analytics on here. A little overview on the report builder, on the dashboard builder in here, how to schedule as well. And so you can send to anybody, any time zone you need to on here. But really one thing I should say about Advanced Analytics is just don't be scared to get in there. There's a lot of data, yes, and you may get lost from time to time. I, I do in there. But the thing is, you sometimes go in there and you pull out some really fantastic reports that can help you. So don't be scared to go in and just have a go. You will not be able to break any of your data. It is simply a reporting tool.